All right, I'll bring in our panel of political strategists, Graham Morris and Bruce Hawker. And I just want to pick up on this AMP today, the chairwoman's resigned, the chief executive's going, all following the awful stuff we've been hearing at the Royal Commission. Graham, as a political hardhead, can you really say you'd give the banks a company tax cut right now? It's harder, <laughs> a lot harder. But I think, you know, I, I think by the time we get to the election campaign, if enough of the big end of town says, hey, fellas, Australia, um, unless our tax rate is competitive, we'll be going offshore. And I suspect Shadow Treasurer Bowen and uh, opposition leader Shorten may well find that the first promise that they break if they ever got into government would be this one. Because the big end of town is not going to stay in Australia um, if the tax rates are better off elsewhere. Now, I don't know how Mr Shorten is going to explain this, but he can't sit there while companies walk offshore. Yeah, but, but is yeah. it harder? Yes. But are they definitely going to? I mean, a company's... Uh, companies actually say, I'm not sure if any actually have said, that they would leave Australia if the company tax cut doesn't happen? No, but if, if there's a 10% differential, um, you know, any board worth its salt, any group of shareholders is going to be saying, what on earth are you doing in Australia when you're better off going to the US or going to Singapore or somewhere? You know, will all of them do it? No, of course not. But will a few? Well, they'd be mad if they didn't. Well, How does yeah. Mr Shorten explain it? Bruce, that, that might happen uh, for some, perhaps, if, if there is uh, you know, a significant difference between the company tax rate here and elsewhere. Do you think that might sway Labor if we did see some companies go that far and say we're going to go? Well, I can't see AMP or the Commonwealth Bank or the ANZ or Westpac uh, or the NAB going offshore, I've got to tell you, David, and that's where uh, the questioning started here. What uh, are the prospects of this tax cut like now as a result of, you know, the sorts of things that we've been seeing the Royal Commission. And I think it's a very, very difficult argument to get across, a very difficult argument. I think the planets have got to be lined up perfectly for you to be able to argue successfully that there is a good case for tax cuts for the big end of town. You can make it for a small business, yes, but when you look at the obscene profits that are being made by the banks, for example, and, uh, and you turn around and say, oh, we've got to give them another 5% so they can continue ripping people off, I mean, that is just grist for the mill for the Labor Party and everybody who's looked at the banks over the years and felt aggrieved by the greed that they've uh, demonstrated on a daily basis. It's just something that's not going to happen without one hell of a fight uh, by the government and without losing a, a heck of a lot of skin. I just don't know why they're sticking with it. If well, I were I, them, yeah. I'd drop I, it. I don't think they're going to in this budget anyway. I think they're going to keep it in the budget yeah, next great. week. Uh, great. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll also see income tax cuts, though, and we haven't seen those in a budget for a long time. Graham. We are still in deficit. We're going to be in deficit for another few years. Is now the time for income tax cuts? Eh, eh, the answer is yes, um, in the lead-up to an election. And if, you know, if we're <laughs> going to have a tax election, let's have uh, you know, Labor jumping up and down about the big end of town and the Coalition talking about middle Australia. That would be terrific. Um, well, Labor jumping up and down because they don't want like the that. big end of town getting <laughs> a tax cut. If you, if, you, if, if you listen at the moment um, to the Treasurer... He's saying, I'm not going to be Santa Claus, but he's not going to be Scrooge either. Who's he going and to be? I was thinking, if I were an editor or a cartoonist planning my front page next week, if it's not Santa Claus and it's not Scrooge, where am I? And you think, well, I can come up with this sort of the magician or the tooth fairy or that, or that sort Taking of wise, sensible uncle. But one of those sort of things um, will be, well, the, the, the cartoonist will portray the treasurer as it. And it's amazing how those cartoons cut through mm -hmm. and mums and dads get the impression from the front page stories. I, I don't know. Um, well, you've you know, given them a bit of food for thought so, there. Sometimes, David, I think, you know, it is wise to have a really tough budget. The, the only one that's really affected polls was Costello's first one, which mm. was, was quite a tough budget. Yep. The giveaway budgets, the mums and dads sort of say, yeah, well, that's good, that's good, that's nice, and then they go on with their normal business. But I, 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 think, I think the government realises that this is really important, 
and it's you know whether or not they get a bounce, who knows? Hmm. They can't afford to go backwards. Yeah, but you just Graham, you seem to be saying income tax cut, yes, more for election reasons rather than budget reasons. Well, it's a bit of that, but I am still a great believer in this in this 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 sort of fact that if there's money left over and you've done what you want to do, a government, then the best people to spend the money are the people you took it off. Mm -hmm. Give it back to them. If there's money left over. If we're still in deficit, though, it's, it's another matter. Bruce, um, I don't suspect Labor, though, will be left on the sidelines um, scratching their heads and opposing an income tax cut. Uh, no, I, I think they're, um, they'll be fully behind that. I think that's, you know, that, that makes good sense in a... Uh, in, an, in a lead-up to an election campaign, and if that is in the budget, then Labor's not going to go out and cut its throat by saying, oh, no, we don't believe in income tax cuts, particularly for people who are at the bottom end, uh, who really do need that money. And if you're talking about, you know, actually improving the quality of people's lives, then that's the way you can do it. Um, you can't do it with the way in which these... Um, you, know, you, you can't really demonstrate that with... Uh, the banks, but you can demonstrate it to people by saying to them, well, you're going to get X hundred or thousand dollars better uh, better off uh, at the end of the year. That's a, that's a good thing for people to be, uh, to, to be campaigning around, governments to be campaigning around and, and Labor. I don't think it's going to get in the way of that. They'd be silly to do that. No, but, but and look, Labor will no doubt say they're, they're able to fund it through tax increases they're talking about elsewhere and not proceeding with company tax cuts and so on. But either way, if both sides are seriously saying now's the time to cut taxes, we need to remember we're still borrowing money. If we're in deficit, we are borrowing money. Um, you don't think people are going to be rather cynical about, uh, about this, Bruce? Well, I think you do have to be careful about that and you have to demonstrate areas where you, you are going to, to you know, make the savings. And you know, one place where you make the savings is what we've already just discussed, and that's with uh, tax cuts to the, to the big end of town. Now, they don't kick in for a few years, but that's the sort of area where you do have to show that you are going to be making savings. Uh, and, but I, I do think that if the government comes up with a tax cut package for... Uh, families, I can't see the opposition saying that they're not going to match it in some shape or form. Mm. Now, the Gonski report, the latest Gonski report, um, the one that probably should have come before the, uh, the other ones uh, that dealt with the money, this one looks at how we actually need to change what's taught in the classroom, uh, how we actually get back up the international rankings that we've been sliding down for years and years. Graham, from your look at it today, do you like the, the sound of what Gonski and his panel are talking about? Well, yeah, but it's the wrong way around, as mm. you just said. You know, with the first, first Gonski was, hey, let's spend a whole heap of money, 20-odd billion dollars, whatever it is, and, and particularly on those sort of schools that are needy, well, that's fine. Didn't work. And now, later, we say, hey... Um, let's have a look, are we teaching years 11 and 12 the right sort of stuff? Mm. In the bottom years, the really young kids, are we teaching them to read and write? And whatever the third one was. Um, what was the third oh, one? This is all about, you know, individualised, tailored, uh, you know, hands-on oh, yeah, approach that's the other to... One. Which let's is great. really good teachers. Yep. Well, whoopee. Um, you know, I'd like to see somebody really have a go at getting rid of the dregs in the teaching profession getting rid of the influence of some of these la -di da <laughs> type people who don't think reading and writing is important, getting rid of those who are influencing our cu curriculum. And it seems to me that David Gonski at least is starting to have a look yeah, at, 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 at how, to, how to reward Good on how to reward the best teachers. Look, it is, it is a bit more complex than all of that, Bruce, and it does go to equipping teachers with uh, an online tool. They can see what's working in other schools, what's working yep. in other states, it's working even in the Catholic sector, if they're in the public sector, and see, you know, little Johnny who can't, you know, quite read as well as he should, what's going to help him. Yep. Uh, that would sound like a pretty good idea. Look, it does sound like a good idea, but, of course, uh, that's what good teachers used to do anyway. They would pick out the students in the class that were mm. struggling and try to work out a program for them. And I think a lot of good teachers still do that. Let's not sell them short. I think they've got a really tough job and they are underpaid. But... Uh, I do believe two things. One, that we really do just need to keep focusing on the fundamentals in education, particularly in the primary years, you know, the old reading, writing and arithmetic. It was a system that um, a, a lot of people of my generation and younger still came up with uh, or grew up with and, and that served them well. I think 
we, we've got to avoid being too trendy. Two, it's great to have these tools to uh, assess what the problems are with individual children, and I don't think we should walk away from that. Uh, despite what I said about teachers should be able to do that anyway. But three, you need money to spend on, uh, on decent uh, teaching facilities, on pay for teachers, on smaller classrooms. They're the sorts of things that are required and, and you cannot go past the dollar in order to get that. That is at the bottom of all these problems. Needs-based funding of schools was actually starting to show some uh, impact uh, under Labor, but it was, uh, it was very short-lived, really. And now we're going back to a system where the private education uh, sector is getting much more uh, than the public system. And that is wrong, and we need to address well, that as well. <clears throat> not, not, not quite, not quite. The government has embraced needs-based funding, uh, just not as much funding as uh, Labor yeah, not would as like much. to spend. But anyway, well, not as much, and, yeah. and, and well, not well, and cutting out before Labor's uh, needs-based funding program was going to cut out too. The last year, yeah, but, but uh, it is dropped out but it is altogether. The, the Catholic and independent schools who are most upset. You're uh, going all right until the end, anyway. Bruce. We got to go. We got to go. Bruce Graham, thank you both. We'll catch up next week. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, quick break and back with the last word.